It is Saturday, September 24th. This is The Talking Dead. Hi, I am Jason. <laughs> and I am Bob. And Paul is on vacation, so it's just us Dirty going to bastard. entertain you tonight. Or we're going to, to attempt. Who let him go on vacation? I don't know. I, I tried to chain him here, but he, he slipped out. I don't think anybody... Note to no self, though. That with you. I know. Note to self, though. If you're going to chain somebody if, to keep them from going for vacation, do it before you rub the Vaseline on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right so, <laughs> that's how he got away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for making it weird. As always. <laughs> so, how you been? I've been good. I've been real good. Yeah. What's new? Uh, not a whole lot. Just, uh, you know, living the dream. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm, I have a new chair. It's a bouncy ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be doing this a lot during the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the Vaseline comments come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bob. <laughs> I, think I have to distance myself from you so much. Damn it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's been a while since we've done a show. It's, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah, for all of the shows, because last week um, we didn't do uh, the New Architect show because he was flying over to the other coast. We didn't do uh, this non-religious life show because was he was moving the to the other coast. <laughs> and so the only show that... Um, are here and now is the Talking Dead and Paul's new show Zombians. 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 Volume one is now up on the site and actually it's it's already gotten pretty good comments from it. Yeah. Yeah. I listened to it. I liked it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it, it's ambient music, so I didn't. It's not like I could sing along with it. You were you were doing dishes, <laughs> listening yeah. to it. Wah! Yeah, and I like like the echo effect he has on his. I, yeah, that that is it is awesome. It is really awesome. Um, but each show is different. It's not necessarily just going to be um, ambient music. He's gonna do a full full line. He he's really big into ambient, so that it's gonna be that for I guess a couple of shows. Um, the next his next broadcast will be on the thirtieth, Friday the thirtieth. He's gonna do it every other week. Right on. So we'll have that up. So stay tuned for that. Other good I guess news that's not really horror movie related, but um, definitely plays into sci fi is the um, the news that came out about the physicist at um, CERN CERN, CERN um, recorded particles moving f- faster than the speed of the light. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Did you read the whole article? I, I've read there? many of parts. In, they, they shot neutrinos and, and they covered, I, I don't know, it was like, what was it, like 300 miles away was the detector... And they and they arrived sixty nanoseconds before light would have. Yeah. And uh and that's pretty neat. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And, yeah. And uh I don't know. I I don't know what it means yet. But I was I don't think anybody else does either. No. I mean all the articles that I've been reading were, were really fascinating. There's one that I was talking about is like it seems like it's a secret goal for pretty much every scientist to prove Einstein wrong. Because you can't. Well, it's, and then, not, it's, not that, it's not that you prove him wrong. Well, not not in a not in a like a event, you know, an I mean, evil he's way, been but right a lot. Yeah, and 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 you know, there's a saying: the the greatest discoveries in science don't occur when somebody says Eureka. The greatest discoveries in science occur when somebody says, "Man, that's weird." Yeah. <laughs> so so they they uh. They have to figure out, you know, one, if it's an actual effect, which they're pretty confident that it is. And, and the other interesting thing about this article, too, was that um, it's not like the guy did it or like it's not like one guy did it last week. And and, you know, they're all everybody. The their heads. Yeah. It's they've been doing it for three years and they're really confident in the result, and they get the yeah. same result every time. So it's like a big scratch too with it. So, <laughs> so now, so now they're moving forward, and they're saying that you know, hey, we, we found this effect, and and we're confident that it's occurring because we've been doing it for three years, and we've measured it, and we've tried every possible way to figure out, you know, maybe it was instrument error, maybe it was, it was, uh, you know, an error in our calculations. They're trying to figure out, you know, rule out every possibility before they came forward and said, this is what we found. Yeah. And now they're inviting the rest of the scientific world to 
think about what it means. What do you think it means? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, not a physicist. So. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty amazing. I mean, I don't know. And, and then they were saying that, that, uh, that if you could, if you could go faster than light, then, then, then they say that that opens up the possibility of, of, you know they're throwing out words like time travel yeah and which i think is an interesting thought too and as far as like sci-fi stuff goes because like one we're all traveling through time at about the rate of 60 seconds per minute right yeah. we're all moving through time and uh and they were saying that you conceivably could move forward in time due to time dilation meaning you would travel something close to the speed of light and then time around you would slow down but then relative to everybody else it would be longer so it would be like you could you know take one trip around the earth and come back and it would be like 50 years later yeah but but they were saying that because you could never go faster than the speed of light you could only you the arrow of time only goes in one direction so now that you can go the possibility that you could go faster than light then maybe that maybe there's maybe the arrow of time goes in the other direction but then that could violate causality. Yeah. And then you have time paradoxes. And then you have the parallel universes coming into play. You have. <laughs> yeah. Actually, what, actually, what I think will happen is I, I think it'll be I think it'll be something like um, like uncertainty or um, or what do they call that? Um, uh, the decoherence, where like, uh. It, it's it's an effect you see on the on the subatomic particle level, but for practical purposes, you it doesn't you can't scale it up to the macro level because there's too many other things going yeah, on. Yeah, too many other variables that would. So so like um, right? It's according to according to you know all of these particle physics, it's entirely possible for you to be able to, to walk through a solid object like a wall or it's entirely possible that you know a beautiful woman would just bing spring into existence next to you however it's also well, now what happened in the garden of eden right oh yeah oh sure. wait, wait. <laughs> oh god it's been a, it's been a couple of weeks that you talked about it so i had to put the fire yeah. in you <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it'll be something like like they'll, they'll, they'll have it'll be like some small particle effect and but but it won't end up enabling a person to go back in time because because then you you would violate causality yeah. you know you'd have the thing like you know it would be there'd be um, a lot of fucked up shit that we could and, and so here's the thing <laughs> um it, 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 this is this is the I, I guess sort of like my the skeptic in me is like if it was ever possible in the entire future history of the human race to go back in time why haven't they done it why haven't you just gone back and said okay remember when you were working on this here's the answer right i mean like you know <laughs> so there's got to be some kind of like you know like like macro limits to yeah it. well even even i mean even even in that, that such a structure level at the at the um molecular molecular level i can't i can't talk it's not even molecular it's smaller yeah than it's that. smaller than that but i'm just saying that even at that level it could, it could do a lot of things. I mean, it has a potential. Well, yeah, I, th I think I think we'll have a potential for like um, applications in like radio communications and computing yeah. and, and things like that. But but as far as like sending a person back in time, I don't I don't think it's gonna it's gonna extrapolate to that. I don't know. But then you know, could be wrong. Maybe that's how come all these remakes are happening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. had a, had an adverse effect of. It, it stunned our imagination in the future, so we just keep doing. That. Yeah, I mean, it, it is fun to think about, though, yeah. right? I mean, it's 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 really fun to think about, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it going that way. Yeah. Another part of, um, I mean, like the news this week and last week, well, the last couple of weeks actually, with um, science has just been really fucking science and technology has been. I've I've been drooling. The 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 big news press release and um, focus on 3D printers now. Have you been keeping up oh, with yeah, those? Yeah, I love them. I like that idea too. Did you ever see, there was, a, um, I think there was like a Swiss company or something, a Swiss technology firm. It, what they did is they made this big room and and it had, um, 
it had cameras all over it and, and motion detectors. And so, and then you had this pen that all of the cameras and the motion detectors, they coordinated the position of this pen in 3D space, yeah. right? And so then the operator would take this pen and he could like, and he was looking at a reference like, a, like on a screen or something, and he could take this pen and draw items in, in the air and then see the representation on a, on a screen. Yeah. And then, and then they had a 3D printer that would print what he drew in space. So he was like, okay, chair. And he would right. like draw a chair <laughs> and then this thing would go. Extrude it's amazing. Chair. Yeah. They just printed out a car. Oh yeah, and I mean not not a running operating car, but the shell. You know how they do prototype cars. Yeah, it's not the inside, but they did that and painted it. It looks beautiful. It's a, sitting on a there's a um, international car show event that they have. It it, well, did, it, did it have all the parts or no? It didn't have all the parts. It was just uh, um, the shell to it. Because I saw one where a guy took a crescent wrench. And a crescent wrench actually has moving parts. Yeah, right? it's got the little thumb wheel and the it's, so it's got a couple of moving parts. And they put this, they put the crescent wrench like in this 3D scanner, and it and it and it scanned the whole thing, and and you know made a yeah. representation from its scan, and then it printed out a working crescent wrench. Uh, from the 3D printer. That was fucking cool, man. Living in the future is awesome. It, it, it totally is. Well, here's here's an article I didn't see. I was just pulling up so I could show you a photo of it. Um, this article actually says that they printed out a fully functional hybrid car. Um, 3D printer prints the whole body of the car. The car is the, as green as possible. Produces no tooling or machining. Um, so so all, the, all the pieces, parts were, were made with the 3D printer? Yeah. That's pretty neat. Here, let me. I'm gonna. You know what that would mean too? Like, I don't think a 3D printer could assemble them because no, I don't think it could differentiate no. that. But here's how you buy a car in the future. <laughs> you, you, it's, you, it's a snap on. You uh, you pay your money, and then a guy says, "All right, you download the file from the yeah. Astro Webs, and then your 3D printer prints out the pieces, parts in as large a modular construction as it can manage, and then you just you just them assemble, yeah." Um, Think of this though. How many times have you been sitting around the house when you're working on a project? You know, if you're, if anybody's like me, I'm always doing just something stupid around that. Just, I want to hang up something. I want to, you know, rearrange something. And there's all, it seems like no matter what project I do, there's always a piece that, that that I need, you know, whatever. If I could just print that shit out, I could, I could print my own shelving. I could print my own, you know, whatever. The, um, the, the concept's not new. It's no, I, no, I know that. Technology is, just... re- is realizing its potential. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it was, it was, they thought that they were going to do that for, um, like space station and shuttle missions. Yeah. Like you, you go up and you don't like, you know, it used to be, you went up with a whole bag of repair parts and, and what you had to do was you had to anticipate what you thought would break or what you thought you'd need in case of break or what, you know, what you couldn't do without. And, uh, and you took those with you. But now with that technology, you just have a, a, a file that has every part and, and it's, you just make what you need as you need it. There's a 3d print. You just take a volume of that, whatever, whatever the material is that, that it's made out of. Yeah. I, I, put, I put the photo in here so we could show it. Um, but that's that's the fully printed hybrid car um, that they printed out, and that, that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, living in the future is cool. It's just amazing because there's so many things that, um, you know, I was like, well, for example, like where is it? This little thing. I broke this a while back. Um, it was it was a full skull, but I. I I got it got dropped and the head cracked, and I've always I, I have I haven't gotten around to doing do it yet, but I want to get some plaster of Paris and fill in the side and make a bowl out of it, and have a zombie popcorn bowl. Um, a zombie popcorn bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it would be a zombie popcorn popcorn bowl. It could be that. It could be you know, and and I, I want to do that. And if I had a three D printer, I could do it. Well, you'd have to have a scanner too. Well, yeah, but right, so the scanner would, would would take a 3D map of of the skull and then 
it would just print out to fit, and then you you know, and it, and it would be so precise that you would just print it out and then, like snap it in. Done. Yeah, and or I could or I could print out a um. Or you just print out the whole thing. Or, or a mold to it and just do it, you know, like a, the mold casing and then fill it up with whatever um, and do it. It would be awesome. And then we could we could just sit here and no, play with plastic. Popcorn. And what is this going to do to Legos once it becomes commercial, you know, like kids would like yeah, print, print out their own Legos? Legos. <laughs> I, mean. I know, right? God, I remember I used to have a big <laughs> bucket of Legos and it was great and i bet i would have had three times as many if you'd have found all the ones i lost <laughs> i'm sure that there are people today that are still finding little lego pieces under their couch yeah or... it's crazy but no it's very exciting there's a um i saw there's a robot machine a robot maker i can't remember um the proper name to it but it's a, it's a 3d printer and they're selling it for like 450 bucks yeah I saw that um, um, there's there's an open source project for a 3D printer. Yeah. And you can make the 3D printer at home yourself with components you can buy off the shelf. And then and, and then it's like, then it moves in stages. And then the thing is, like, if you want to improve your 3D printer, you make it make the parts you need to make it better. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's awesome. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. We could never, we would never have to leave the house. I would eat yeah. plastic. I'd yeah. make it into like a sandwich. <laughs> and you know, you know the cool thing about those three D printers. Uh, many of them, the um, some of them use like a liquid resin. Some of it uses like a dry powder. Yeah. They, they have different ways that they achieve the same end. But at the end of the day, if you whatever is left over, if you break it or you don't need it anymore, you can just, you just feed it right it back in it. Pile and yeah. it smashes <laughs> it up, and then you reuse that material again. It is awesome. I, I... Um, Diamond uh, was it Diamond Age or Snow Crash did did something like that. It was a I was a um, I think the author is uh, Stephen Donaldson, and he's he writes he wrote Snow Crash and um, and Diamond Age. And, in, and I think it's in Snow Crash. He imagines a future like that where you buy things and then – and what you get is a file to to use in your printer to create them. And then sort of the economy becomes – you don't you – don't, not only are you spending money to buy the, the, the plans, but you have to spend money – you buy the plans and then you just buy the raw material that makes them. There's like the two big commodities. Yeah information and this raw material i think it's great i i I would love to live in a world like that (laughs) we're getting there yeah it's awesome makes me happy but but great but this is um entertainment show so moving on that was our little intro 3d printers if you just want to send us one with scanner so we can play around that'd be great (laughs) do it no but um I remember when it was. Sorry, I don't mean no, it. no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Like three D. When everybody now says three D printers, I remember when it, when when like that was not considered technical enough, so they called it rapid prototyping. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> no, see, I'm obsessed with three D movies, but I think my adult phase of three D is three D printing. Really? Yeah. Hey, that's kind of cool, man. Turns out the whole world's in three D. It's not good enough, though. They need to fix the cameras. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it really needs to breathe to that next level. Yeah, it's like, what the? <laughs> you can do way better. But anyway, there's a movie that's coming out um, starring Brad Pitt that's not going to be in 3D. And it's based on a book called World War World War Z. Oh, holy shit. That's going to be so good. Uh, well, it better that, be good. Well, before we get in, if it's good or not... Um, they just released the first look of some of the zombies that are going to be in World War Z. Uh, and let me pull up a couple. Let's see if I can. This is one. These are, these are just the um, kind of the, not the puppets. The random but dead the, guy lying on the street. Yeah, and then they have a couple of them hanging up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so, this. Yeah, so these these are what the, the zombies are going to look like. Um, well, for this type of zombie i'm sure there's going to have a wide variety of it yeah. um so it's, it's really hard to tell how the special effects is going to be they can they can go do so much 
But the problem is, is not necessarily the zombies. It's um, people are upset um, about the movie because they release who's doing it Universal Paramount. Sorry, um, released the synopsis from the film, and it has nothing about the book. Really? Yeah, they've taken a whole direction, and fans are like so upset that. Um, What's their they're, they're they're saying that you take what was good in the book and make it a, just a zombie movie to throw on the pile. The synopsis says the story revolves around the United United Nations employee Gary Lane, who um, travels the world in a race against time to to stop the zombie um, pan epidemic um, that is toppling armies, governments, and threatening um, to destroy humanity itself. Huh. So I wonder what. Yeah, that, that that is a different direction because yeah, that's... Um, the guy in the book, the guy whose point of view you get, he's it's already done. We've already, we've won, and he's collecting stories to to he was he was he was tasked by the UN to document the um, the war, and, and and what he winds up doing is sort of writing memoirs of all of these episodes. That, you know, yeah, and that's not what this is, uh, and. What um Grown. Oh, why did that refresh? Stop doing that. I'm trying to read you. Um I'm gonna pull it back down. <laughs> the computer just said I'm gonna refresh right now. Um Yeah, f- Film School Rejects um said this on their website. They said if you're going to get fans of the book excited, only take away what makes the book unique. What's the p- and, and only take away the part of the books that makes it unique. So what what is the point um to make the movie? Help. And the name only that uses the title as a hook to get people into the theater before you switch and bait. Um, and it, it just goes on talking about how it, he's really, it's a, it's a shame that that they would do this. Because they, if they stayed with the book or stayed at least yeah. close to the book, they had a slam dunk. They had people who were ready, already pulling the money out of their wallet to give yeah, to the, buy tickets. And now they've switched their whole marketing scheme and have to convince all these people do you want to see another zombie movie? I mean, I do want to see another zombie movie. I mean, I do too, <laughs> but it would it would be nice if it was a different formula. And this movie had had potential to be a new formula to the genre. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you sound so happy right now. Uh, I I just, you know, any any more it it's it's like you you hear about the oh wow, great idea for a movie and then uh and then it, you know things get changed or left out or maybe yeah I don't know, they just go a different direction, and so at the end of the day, I'm, I'm my attitude has just become, oh God, please don't suck, <laughs> yeah. don't fuck it up, God damn it. They're I mean, gonna fuck it up. It sounds like they're heading that way right now. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, I don't I don't remember a guy in the book racing against the clock. Well, we got the book right there. To, if you want to grab it to thumb through. <laughs> I, I've read it. I've read no, it. I know. I was just saying it's like I if just, we wanted to re- refresh. I didn't remember him racing against the clock to s- stop the zombie apocalypse. What did, What can one guy do? And that was kind of the take of the book is yeah. that one guy didn't win the war. It was a concentrated well, effort with everybody on the same page. And Well, you got to have a new Rambo. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's awful yeah i mean hopefully it'll be good maybe maybe they'll come to the senses and but they're already filming Probably and not. production and shit so no when has hollywood ever done anything right no bastards less and less every day <laughs> yeah so um speaking of of staying close to the source material um uh, somebody, uh, I, I, I watched Game of Thrones, the yeah. HBO show, and I haven't read the books, but everybody I know that has read the books says that one of the great things about the show is that the is that it's really, really faithful to the source material. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so like, I guess the first season was the Game of Thrones, which was like the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire, or something like that. And and uh, and everybody that's read the books says, yeah, the show is the book. The show an exact match. They're they're really oh, that's good. really tight, and uh, 
and it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's really, so really, what's the, what's really good. So what's the premise of for... It's, a, it's like a medieval fantasy type yeah. thing. Um, I think I think I read that when the guy pitched it to HBO, he, he called it um, uh, Rome meets Sopranos. <laughs> and, uh, but really, I, I guess for me, a more accurate description would be like maybe like the Renaissance Fair does the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually awesome if we just like, hey, let's go to Scarborough Fair. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's really, really good. It's it's an excellent show. It's a it's really, really good, and, and it has great actors, great characters, great story. It's phenomenal. I, I understand it'll be um, it'll probably be released on DVD in January, and then you know February, March, or something. They'll 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 do season two. It'll it'll air. It's probably already in production. From what I understand, episode one aired. And then, like an hour into airing, HBO renewed it for a second season. Really? Yeah, it was. It, it was the reception was that good. And then it has the um, the one dwarf actor Peter Dinklage. He won a, an Emmy for it. Wow. He's he's good in it. And it's just really a cool show, man. I'll have to pass it along. It's it's excellent. Gotta check it out. I've I've seen a lot about it. I've seen. I love the the promotional poster of it. Yeah, yeah. Where he's sitting in that massive chair and he's. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. The Iron Throne. Yeah, that's a really good show. Man. I can't believe. Does like, it like suck you in? I mean, my is radar it, for that long. Yeah. Does it like totally suck you in, or just? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I I I, uh, I started watching on like, I started watching on Thursday. Today's Saturday. There's like 13 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I worked three days. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... so pretty much every every moment was I was watching that. Awesome! It's that good. Yeah, we did that with Prison Break. Um, we didn't watch it. You know, we watched it off of Netflix, and we stayed up days, all night watching them. Yeah. You know? And then when we got to the movie, we were like, no! It like killed everything. <laughs> we were just like, yeah. I do like I do like those shows, man. Like I've, I've I don't know how I don't know how the world watched TV before you could watch things on on video disc. You know, like I don't yeah. know I don't know how the world even managed to function like that because now it's like next. You yeah, know, I want to know what happens next. And man, if there were commercial breaks, I would be pissed <laughs> off. Well, see, there's commercial breaks, and you had to wait till next week. You'd probably wouldn't be as interested in it. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like. Oh wait, that's tonight. Yeah, I'm having drinks. Whatever. <laughs> you, you know, I've noticed um, the the shows that I tend to like now are are continuity heavy. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't like watching anything that's just sort of like monster of the week or villain of the week. Yeah. It's just they 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 they're fun. Maybe one episode, like you know, I like spend an hour watching it here and there. But um, it's the things that are continuity heavy that have a larger overarching storyline that really really grab me and suck me in. Because otherwise, you know, because otherwise if it's like villain of the week, it's like, yeah, right, yeah, I saw them beat this guy last week, only he was called something else. Yeah. We watched um, Cold Fish the other night. Yeah. That is the most fucking disturbing movie you'll ever <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, my God. And you uh, put that out there for the world. I did. <laughs> I gave it. And, and the woman who won the DVD that we sent the DVD to... Um, email me today. Um, let me see if I still have it in my phone. She's like, "Oh, make it stop! It burns." It, <laughs> pretty much. Um, let me see if I have it. I may have deleted it. <laughs> yeah, but she emailed me saying thanks for the DVD. Um, it, it arrived and I watched it, and then she said, "And I'll never be the same." <laughs> and pretty much, she said it was really, really disturbing. But I don't, I don't have. It. Um. No, I don't. I don't have it in here. Oh well. <laughs> so, but yeah. But she was happy that she won the DVD, though. But she said it was way yeah, disturbing. Yeah, people like winning free shit. You know what I'm upset about? You know, I'm, I'm leaving in in, a, in roughly a week, and I've been offered two event screenings for two different movies um, to do, and I've turned them down. Because I'm not going to be here, and it's just, it's just going to be. Um, I'm going to write them back and see if they'll do a guest list for us, so we can just do it that way. Because one of them is the thing. Oh, really? And I'm just like, oh my god, I want to. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for this, and 
I don't know. So, I I want to I want to give away screenings to that film. Yeah, that's another one where I'm like, oh god, please don't let it suck. Yeah, it probably will, but still. Actually, I, I'm kind of <laughs> hopeful for that one in that like. It's a monster in the Antarctic, and it changes into the shape of other people, and nobody knows who's the monster and who's the real person. Yeah, a lot like the original movie. Like, it's hard <laughs> to screw that up. It really is, but you know, they've done it. But you can, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, the trailers hold true to the feel of the way I remember the yeah. original being. Um, it's a little bit clearer. Did you ever see um? Uh, uh, that, that, what it was other movie that took, uh, it, it takes place in the Arctic. It's called Whiteout. No, I didn't. It was. Uh, it's pretty good. It's. It's kind of a. It was kind of a like a noirish thriller where there's, uh, you know, like some sort of conspiracy and some people are getting murdered and it takes place in, in, in the Arctic, right? Yeah. It's at the in the in the um, in the research stations that are there, and it, right, it's the it's the bottom of the world. Yeah. And uh. And. It's based. It's actually based on a comic book, and the comics are really, really good. And and one of the things that makes the comics so interesting is that the Arctic itself is almost like a villain in the comic. It's almost a character that's a villain that's just gonna kill everybody. Yeah. And and then well, that's know, probably true. Oh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. And uh, and the movie doesn't quite hit the mark. I mean, the movie's kind of cool, but. The most interesting things about the story are the Arctic environment. You know, like yeah. it's just it's such a harsh environment that you you make one misstep and you're dead. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if the if the new thing movies because I thought the um the first thing was you know maybe it, it kind of it kind of lived in that Arctic world. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I mean, there's only so many movies that take place in the Arctic, right? White out the thing. <laughs> That's it. Um, Thirty Days a Night. Oh no, they were. They were in like Alaska. Or yeah. Something. We're gonna be on the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Soon. That I, I know. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll see. Um, hopefully, I'll see Ridley Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can shove a microphone in your face. I'd be like two microphones. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be awesome, though. Hey, right on. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a recorder so you can go get an, another interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It needs to be done. But, yeah. So, did you see the movie Monster that was directed by Patty Jenkins? Um, yeah, that was great. You loved it? Yeah, it, that was the, that's the Charlize Theron movie, yeah? Yep. Yeah. And, um... It's a, what is it about? Put her on the put 80, her on the map as an actress. Warner. Yeah, it did. Yeah. She won an Academy Award. Yeah, and um, her her portrayal of Alien Warnos was spot on. Yeah, that that was a really really powerful movie. And in, in, uh, in, did you did you see the Nick Broomfield documentaries? Mm. Uh, so Nick Broomfield, a real famous uh, documentary filmmaker, um. He he was actually friends with Aileen Warnos, or he got to be friends with her. And, and one of the things that's funny about Nick Broomfield is, even though he's a documentary filmmaker, he almost becomes a character in his own movies that he's making, right? I mean, it's ostensibly about something else, but he's sort of, he becomes involved. Yeah. And um, so the, the first movie he made was, um, it was called... Uh, uh, the selling of a serial killer, and it was it was the Alien Warno story, and the the things that he brings up about her, like she was guilty, right? She she did it, but she was not really given a fair shake at trial. The um, the arresting officers they sold the rights to the movie about her life before. A jury ever handed out a conviction. Mm. The judge involved, he also sold his interest to the to the rights to the to the movie about her before he even allowed a verdict to be handed out. Um, and it was all sort of contingent upon a um, a guilty verdict. Um, 
Jeb Bush was running for governor in Florida on a pro death penalty yeah. ticket, and it was in his interest to convict her and uh, and try her for a capital crime. And uh, uh, there was a whole bunch of oh, was a whole bunch of shady stuff that happened with her. Um, one of the things that would ha- it would not have exonerated her, but it would have helped make her case for insanity was to show that the first victim that she killed, because uh, there's no doubt that she did it, right? There's really little. There's little doubt that she did it, but. Um, the first victim that she killed, he had been, uh, um, uh, uh, he he had a history of violence where he had he had committed violence against women, prostitutes in particular, and he had been, um, and I forget all what his whole story was, but um, he uh, he was her first victim, and, and that that fact was kept out of the jury deliberations, like. Like, it wasn't just neglected or overlooked. It was purposefully kept out. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that the, that the monster movie, which, you know, it was a lot of supposition, but I think that they kind of get it right. I think, I, I think that they present a plausible uh, scenario where that Alien Warnos was prostituting herself in Florida, and the first person she killed was this guy tried to beat her up and kill her because he had a history of doing so. And she defended herself and, and, and killed him, and then she just snapped. And then what she did in the movie is she just, she just repeatedly put herself in those situations, and she would, like, recreate the situation. And then she would imagine the abuse and imagine that the other, you know, the John was trying to hurt her, and then she would kill him. Yeah. And um, and I think that that's a very plausible scenario. I think the movie does a really good job of showing that. But that's the monster movie. So then, um, so now it's like twenty years later, and Nick Broomfield, who's had a not like a friendship, but a correspondence with Alien Warners this whole time that she's been on death row. Um, he he did a whole bunch of interviews with her just prior to her execution. And so in the first movie, right, wrong, or indifferent. She was sold down the river. Like she was not given a fair shake. She did it. She absolutely did it. But um, was she treated fairly? No. And then, uh, and then in the second documentary movie, he sort of shows like right, wrong, or indifferent. They executed a crazy person yeah. in Florida. So you know, take from that what you will. So I yeah I I, I think there's a lot of depth to that monster yeah. movie and I think that lady did a fantastic job showing the story. Excellent because the reason I bring Patty Jenkins up, the director of Monsters, um, she's currently in talks to direct a new movie, Thor Two. <laughs> well, I think she's eminently qualified <laughs> to direct that movie. <laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> she just kind of went, whoa. <laughs> Left turn. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> hey, she needs she needs to, uh, you know, make a house payment and well, find a, some new car. It's funny something. because since Monster, she hasn't done a movie. Monster's a really, that was a really powerful movie. No, I know, but she hasn't done any work since that time. And now she's picking up, or in the talks. It's not final yet, but she's in the talks to pick up Thor 2. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to think that working on Monster sort of affected her as a filmmaker. Because that's a man. That's, that's a fucked up story from <laughs> yeah. day one. But Thor's not. And um, and even <laughs> even Nick Broomfield after he did the um, the last Alien Warners, Warners documentary, he didn't do anything after that either. He he just now has a new film that's coming. Oh, really? out. It's, yeah, it's going to be about Sarah Palin, which. No. <laughs> yeah. But he's 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 actually doing the unauthorized biography. Oh, okay, so that'd be interesting, I guess. It's mm-hmm. called You Betcha. Oh wait, I've seen the trailer for it. I have seen the trailer for it. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah, because he's, yeah. Cause, and did you see in the trailer for that? He's a character in the trailer. I know. He's like, he, but he's he's totally poking sticks at him. Um, but apparently with Thor too, um. Natalie Portman, Chris Helmsworth, Anthony Hopkins have all agreed to return. 
Why would they not? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, but you know, sometimes they don't. <laughs> Maybe they're like, uh, my paycheck needs to be bigger. <laughs> well, all right. It's, so Chris Hemsworth, he is four. Yep. So whatever, probably whatever he wants, he's they, gonna he's, get. He's, he's, and, and Anthony Hopkins, he has done. Like, ever since Silence of the Lambs, he has done anything that comes his way. I don't think he's been very discriminating in his in his roles. But why and would you even, turn down a, a Marvel uh, movie? Uh, you wouldn't. Why? I you mean, wouldn't. It's, look what it's done to old actors. Well, well um, okay, so uh, uh, Tobey Maguire, yeah. he didn't want to do Spider-Man 2 and 3. They had to really. He took a lot of convincing, and um, well, that's two and three. That's not the first one. Once you do the first one, you're like, I'm, I'm sold. That's it. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. didn't want to do the sequels. He he didn't. He did it, it, it was hard for them. To, it was hard for the studio to convince him to to move forward on two and three. The same yeah. with Kirsten Dunst. She didn't like doing it. Really? Yeah. Even despite the paycheck, they didn't like. You think? Doing it. Okay. I've worked some shitty ass jobs in my yeah, life. Right. Well, for shitty ass oh. money. And I know I cuss, scream, kick, bleed of how much I hate the jobs. But on Friday when they handed me a paycheck, even if it was like $100, I was like, okay, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can do that again for another so, week. So <laughs> I don't understand the concept of... Um, <laughs> yeah. No, that's... That, I, yeah, I, I'm with you on that, man. Sometimes I think that um, these, these Hollywood starlets are, are just spoiled rich kids. You're like $2.5 million. <laughs> Plus royalties. Now, nah, well, fuck that. You know, and here's the thing too, right? They're actors, right? I don't think they're actually working very hard. There might be a long day on set, <laughs> but you're they're in their trailer, you know, eating bonbons and sipping champagne. Um, <laughs> As we sit here like and drink beer. About, um, yeah, I know, right? But we don't um, get paid for it. I like that guy, uh, Doug Jones. Um, he's a character actor, and anytime you see a guy in an uncomfortable, you know prosthetic suit with makeup and effects and practical effects all over. It's either Eddie like, Murphy or... Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, and the fat suit is Eddie Murphy. Um, but uh, Doug Jones, he was Abe Sapien, and he was been in um, the other Del Toro movies. He was the Fawn in uh, Pan's oh, Labyrinth, yeah, yeah. and he was the big Death Angel in Hellboy, and he was the... See, that'd be a fun job. That'd be he, a kick-ass job. Well, yeah, I, you know, we look at it now, but... Um, I I read that those guys, like your job is, let's see, you have to get up at three o'clock in the morning to be at makeup at you know three thirty four, and then you're in makeup where guys are putting shit on you, so and you gluing stuff to your face while for you the sit next there eight hours, eh. and 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 it's not just sitting there getting worked on. You got to hold still. You can't get up to pee. You you're, you're stuck. It's hard. And I you do. Have to th- stay in it. Do you realize on my days off from work, what I do here? I put a catheter on me, sit in front of this computer. <laughs> Are you, you got a stadium buddy? <laughs> I got a stadium buddy. And I sit here, and I'm in front of the computer. So if I'm getting paid millions of dollars to, for people just to put shit on me, whatever. Uh, I, my point is not easy. But Doug yeah. Jones has made a career out of being that, and I don't think he gets paid the millions of dollars. Oh, I'm sure he does. That you know, uh, Kirsten Dunst was paid to be Mary Jane in Spider Man. Yeah. She just, like, the worst part of her job was she had to kiss Tobey Maguire. I'm sure that was, you know. But the thing with his career, he can live on doing that after people start hating Kirsten Dunst. I mean, that's fine. My, my <laughs> point is, they're not working that hard. I mean, yeah. there might be a long day here and there, but I, I'll, I'll be. They don't have to go home and do laundry, is what you're saying. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like after a hard day, you're like, oh, I gotta fucking take out the trash, I gotta fucking do the dishes, do the laundry. Like, in, in my <laughs> opinion, a guy like Doug Jones, for the roles he's taking, he has a hard job. Yeah. It's not easy. If you're Toby Maguire, it's an easy day. Yeah. I, I want an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, right? I think you pay me that money. Anyway, yeah, so. That's funny. Yeah. I forgot what, what I was going to bring up. But. We were talking about... Um, uh, shit, I don't even know. Right, Hard anyway. work and... Hard oh, work. yeah, why, why wouldn't... Chris Hemsworth, Anthony Hopkins, now oh, yeah. they're back for Thor. 
And uh, yeah, why wouldn't they? Uh-huh. And Natalie Portman, she's she she even said in in I don't know. There's some interview after her post Oscar win where she's just like, I'm just trying to to make some movies. You know, she's she she wants to be in the big budget. Movies. She does, do, but she does a good job on. I mean, I, I yeah. Every movie I've seen with her, I've not been. I've kind of I kind of liked her better when she was. More discriminating in her roles now. She, I mean, now she was in, she was in a stupid romantic comedy with Ashton Kutcher. Like how? Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't uh, know she was that. Yeah, no. Awful. See, no, I'm talking about. I thought, yeah, I agree with you. When she's you know, when she she's was, picking shit like V for Vendetta, and Black Swan, shit like that. Right. I'm down with that. And those are those are bold roles. In fact, she went in for V for Vendetta with her. Like, hey, you know, and she was a beautiful woman with long, gorgeous hair, and she went in knowing that part of the role was she have to shave your head. Yeah. And she was like, do it. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just, I don't know, man. Of course, she was, she was Amidala, so I guess how big budget can get. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's the thing where, like, if when George Lucas comes up and is like, hey, you want to be in my new Star Wars movie? You go, yes. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. I don't, I think that everybody drools. And, they, yeah, they, and then it's like, you don't even have to pay me, George. I'll take a back end on the merchandise. <laughs> yeah. when, when you make that doll of me, make right. sure, you know. Yep. But if you had your own 3D printer, you wouldn't have to wait on George Lucas to do it. You can I make know. your, <laughs> we could have zombie popcorn podcast <laughs> action figures. There's a, um, there's a thing that does that. There's a, um, there's a site that, uh, that, uh, uh, they uh, they do that. They make action figures of you, and what you do is you you stand in like this whole body scanner, and it and it you know makes a three D rendering of your of your whole body, and then it runs through a like a little computer process, and then they they crank out a little articulated three D action <laughs> figure That's of awesome. you. We need to make them. And you can do that. <laughs> I, I think it's, I don't know, I, I seem to remember it was a couple grand a pop, but nah. it's still kind of neat. Send us donations if you want. <laughs> yeah. There is a new link on zombiepopcorn.com that you can click to send us tips, donations, whatever. If you like what you're listen, listening to, you like what you read, help support us. Let us grow. Wait a you second. want action figures. <laughs> that would be cool. We could get the zombie popcorn action figures. We could We could actually use those. Be like, like, like. <laughs> Bob, the angry atheist. Ken, the, the Bible guy. No, no, Ken, the uh, and, and, and mad props like, for the skinny guy. Yeah. Paul, we just get toothpicks for <laughs> And then you'd be like, Jason. And then, like, just Jason. Just that. Just that. <laughs> Hi, guys. You'd have to have, like, 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 uh, like a no. headset, like, sound gear on. And 3D glasses on. <laughs> That's what it'd be. I'd just be wearing 3D glasses and a microphone. <laughs> hey, guys. Play with my figure. Oh, yeah. That's funny. If I, had, if I had a couple grand laying around, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> totally do it. But if we had a couple of grand laying around, I don't think you'd be sitting in here drinking beers. And That's <laughs> true. You'd be like, fuck your show. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got better things to do. You know what, though? Yeah, yeah, I, um, you say that. And, uh, <laughs> I and did. I listen, I listen to a lot of podcasts all over the map. And and some of them I like a lot, and yeah. some of them I um I've been disappointed with. But um the the show that, the show that you put together is actually on par with a lot of the things that I I listen to. It yeah. really is. Yeah, we should be really proud of the show. Woo! And, <laughs> and and like and then the other day I was watching this one thing, and it was a it was a it was a it was geared towards comic books, you know. And they were asking they were they were talking about Michael Moore, like what was the best Michael Moore? Yeah. Um, story and they were talking about Watchmen and Swamp Thing. It was the worst god awful geek discussion I've ever heard. <laughs> we do those sometimes. And, but not it wasn't because it was discussed. It was because these guys were they weren't discussing it. They were they were saying lines. It was a scripted dialogue <laughs> and done poorly. It was it was, it was, like, it was like me trying to read that letter on the New York Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Like, <laughs> like he like yeah you know, he would he would say something about Alan Moore and and the guy would like well you know what my favorite uh, Alan Moore story was and he and the other guy would be like no what was it you know it was it was really bad it was like it was like um I don't know like high school drama wow. <laughs> it was really really poorly done no I, I like I like my shows to be raw I like them raw 
if there's those awkward moments in silence where we're like, yeah. we don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be in there. I just, I, I want. Yeah, those guys, it was really <laughs> bad. Yeah, like, so like I said, and, and I've been listening to a lot of other um, uh, podcasts that are out there, and I, I think that we, I think that what we do is, 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 is as good or better than I, what well, else is out there. I think we're, we're doing well. Um, I mean, we have listeners. The last, the last 90 days, we had, had over 3,000 downloads of our podcast. Nice. Yeah, for the Zombie Popcorn Netcast. Very cool. Um, that's awesome. I, I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Right? I, I, Man. That's, that's just on the audio side. That's not including the YouTube stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm very thankful for everyone who listens yeah. to the show. And beer helps, uh, too. I like having Yeah, beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> it totally does. It you helps for those awkward moments when I break out the Vaseline. No. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> But no, seriously, we you may not think we have people listening to stuff, but look, um, on another one of our shows, I'm, I'm going to plug this just because um, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. You know the show that we, I do with Thomas, The New Architects? Um, we try to do it whenever we can when he's free from tour and stuff. Two weeks back, maybe it was three weeks, we did a show about... Um, communities we pretty much always do shows about communities but it was um, this one was about the deep green resistance okay um and we we were talking about because we had a listener email us and say um hey what do you think about the deep green resistance here's their website they actually have a book um this is you know xyz is kind of in a nutshell what they believe what do you think about it and of course thomas and i didn't know much about it so we did quick you know elbow uh deep research nothing too too in depth but we we talked about it and we you know discussed it two days after the podcast went live i get an email from the person who wrote the book oh uh, yeah and said well, i'd be happy to send you the book if you want to read it and then i was like yeah hell yeah so um they sent me the books i got the books um here deep green resistance and her other book, um, The Vegetarian Myth. So I'm, I'm reading those. Uh, and when I get back from my trip, we're going to have them on the show. Yeah. Hey, cool. And I think that's pretty awesome that people listen. And that that's the number one reason why I wanted to do this is just yeah. to engage people. Whether it's me, yeah, I, it, me and you talking. Yeah, it's amazing. Or, you know, all of us and you talking. I, I love it. It's like the comment that on this non religious life on the yeah, iTunes. I got a very nice, nice comment to say. I, 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 I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just, I, as far as that kind of stuff goes, like, I'm, I'm just like, any day now, the trolls are going to come out. It's going to happen. Because they're all over the place, man. Like, it's just. Um, but you know what? Even on Zombie Popcorn, I've been doing Zombie Popcorn in some facet because it started off something completely than what it is now. But it's been around since. When did we start that? 2006? 2007 um so it's been up there and yet i don't have the trolls yeah people who leave comments are leaving sincere comments yeah yeah, I, yeah i've been really surprised like we've had uh, you know a lot of the response has always been been really really positive and, and not only that it's like from people i would don't even know you yeah know? Like, I can't believe, like, somebody <laughs> it's not like our mom you know? talk. <laughs> yeah it might, i mean it's good there's there's one um i mean we we get Every you know, probably one out of every fifty comment we get is some you know douchebag or somebody just trying to be funny and didn't achieve it. Um, like on Paul's new show, the very first comment on there is like, "Stop this bullshit and upload horror movies," because that's what I used to do for. On, yeah. You know, I'm like, whatever. The, we're doing something else now. <laughs> but other than that, everybody else's comments on there. But anyway. Enough about us. Let's talk about you. <laughs> no, but anyway, if you do like the show, please leave us comments. If you um, are financially able, please send us donations because that helps us. It really does. Um, it helps pay for the website. It helps pay for um, the broadcast. It helps pay for keeping things going as well as us expanding and getting more people on the show. Yeah. Or you know what? If you like the show, you don't even have to send us any money. Just you don't. tell somebody Tell else other about people. It. That is or true. write a review. That is true. That helps. Do it, definitely do it. And if you want to contribute to the show, if there's something you want us to talk about, if there's something that you want to write about, if there's something that you want to actually physically talk about, 
let me know. We'll work it out. We'll have you on the show. We'll have you a special guest blog blogger whatever whatever you want yeah. if it's fitting that is i don't want any we've been we've been saying on on non-religious life like if you write <laughs> us hate mail we'll read it on the air <laughs> promise yeah, for some reason y'all want hate mail so bad it's it's fucked up but whatever it makes you happy yeah, it's, yeah, yeah but, I don't know. so anyway yeah i um yeah this, this whole um the whole endeavor has been been is is um shaping up nice and i'm, and I'm really happy to see the positive response and um and uh it, so it got me all right so w- weird how the segues work right because uh, <laughs> natalie portman v for vendetta michael moore two guys doing a bad podcast about michael moore <laughs> and then and then, then we got to like how great our fans are yep that's it that's the way it works so where do we take it now uh, yeah, dark shadows know. maybe yeah <laughs> No, really. I thought it was going to be like, same place we take it every night, Pinky. <laughs> we try, <laughs> we try to, to take, take over, over the world. world. That, that's the whole purpose of this, but we, yeah. don't, we don't talk about that. No, but speaking of dark shadows, um, I have some Vaseline over here. Yeah. <laughs> you got to stop with the Vaseline, dude. Man. You're just going to weird people out. <laughs> We're going to start getting sh- people mailing us tubes of Vaseline. You're gonna need like a uh, you're gonna need like a comedy advisor. <laughs> well, especially when I'm doing this. <laughs> How's that ball working out? I love this ball, actually. Do you feel your core muscles hey, tightening? Uh, up? You know what? You know, we're, we're, we're turning into Mar- Martha Stewart or whatever now. But um, when I first got this ball, I just I threw it down here and I sat on it. It fucked me up. <laughs> it seriously <laughs> fucked me up. I was in so much pain the next day. Because yeah, I sat down in front of the computer. I was working on the blog, we were editing stuff and doing whatever. I'm just sitting here going, woo, yeah, spin in it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the next day I'm like, my, oh, my God. Because yeah. it, it really, it, they say that you, 10 days you lose a pound. But just Stabilizes it, your core. Yeah. And it, it, it was very painful. So I had to um, bring the chair in, sit on the chair for yeah, a while. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> I was crying. No, I, had to, I had to sit, you know, a couple of hours in the chair and then bring the ball back out. And yeah. but now, now I think I, I think I think I have it down. I can sit on the ball all the time now. Yeah. So we hope. And hopefully, I don't have pain when I get on the airplane or something. Mm-hmm. That's so gonna be like, ah, oh, can I have a ball? Um. <laughs> yeah. So you give me the crooked. chair. I give chair. you the crooked chair, nice. so you would feel <laughs> awkward. Yeah. It's good. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I started listening to the Smodcast stuff. Um, it's funny. I can't listen to it for every episode. And, you know, it's they do they do so much. It's it's hit or miss. Yeah. No, I mean, I I like, I like what those the, things. Yeah, I like our show for sure. Um, I like it, but there's there's some some shows I'm just like this is funny, but yeah, I like their live stuff better than their studio stuff. Yeah, yeah. Their live stuff is more engaging. That's what I like. I do think it. the I think some of the stuff they do in their studio and in my studio it means like Kevin's basement, like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I like every once in a while uh, somebody will like will come downstairs and, and Kevin gets all pissed off. <laughs> We're recording here. God, so rude. And you hear the dogs barking. Shut, <laughs> hey, shut up. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what I do to Miley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, Ke- yeah, Kevin. Kevin does a lot of smodcast. Yeah, he does. He does all kind of podcast content, and um, I think it's great that he does. I mean, that stuff is and, fun. And, and he gets people involved, and he takes them on the yeah. road. He's he's really defining a new media. Yeah, that's good, good for him. I like it. Well, let's get back to movies, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dark shadows. That, that was that was a nice little. Did uh, you see the right? Um, so you got the the, the picture of um. Of uh, Dark Shadows now, the the cast picture yeah. was in Entertainment Weekly. Yep, which that's pretty cool. Um, Johnny Depp looks awesome. But have you did you see there was there was another picture that that wasn't a produced picture. It was like like some kind of candid shot of of Johnny Depp walking along like I don't know some rocks or some shit like that. And uh, 
he looked like Michael Jackson, man. Like, really? Yeah, his skin was all pale, and he was wearing these funny glasses. Oh, I've, I see, I didn't see the photo, but I heard there was a lot of people writing about it, and they it, it just looked the, strange. The the fan the fans of the original were freaking the fuck out. They were yeah. saying, "Oh my god, this is gonna be horrible!" And then when they saw this photo, um, the the produced the official photo, the fans are went back on what they were saying. They said they actually look like. Yeah, no. well, I mean, you know, come on, you get those, um, those sort of like candid behind the scenes production photos. You can't judge by that. It's, it's tough to, right? Yeah, I, I know. But people do it. <laughs> I, do you remember when the first, um, not the first, but like the second X Men movie was coming out? The Brian Singer X Two X Men United. Yeah. Which I love that movie. It was a great movie. But um, there was an early leaked picture of um, Alan Cummings as Nightcrawler. And man, the whole like you know fanboy world went nuts because like they were like they were like oh this looks awful this looks horrible and it was it was kind of like a sketchy picture and then you're like where are they gonna go with this and is that the costume is that what he's gonna look like and then just the whole world just went nuts and um and and, and it was it was a leaked picture and it was like a production photo you know yeah. and 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 I was really kind of worried you know I was like oh this is gonna be <laughs> and then uh and then x2 was awesome i thought yeah. alan cummings looked great as night call crawler and the whole thing was just handled really really well yeah so yeah it is it's tough to judge those those candid production shots because it's not it wasn't meant to be in front of the camera something yeah. else was going on or maybe it needed something and especially else. when maybe. you're when you're building characters like that there's so much more to just you know being behind the scenes with makeup on. Yeah, There's so yeah. much more to characters like that. There's so much like this. There's so much more to looking like a Michael Jackson with the glasses on. Uh, I, uh, I, I agree. It would be the, you know, maybe maybe those glasses were just, I don't know, something Johnny Depp liked to wear in the sun. Yeah. Like, maybe they weren't even... In the, you know, in or, the or maybe the director said, if you're going outside, you know there's cameras out there. You need to cover up majority of whatever eye stuff that you have going yeah. on. Maybe uh, he had contacts or something that you don't... You know, I mean, I don't know, but yeah. Well, what was, what was another movie that did that too? That they, 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 um, it was really secretive, and any time the cast wore a costume, like when they weren't in front of the camera, they had to wear like these long trench coats. Like that was kind of like the agreement. Like this is yeah. how we're gonna do it. And if you're not in front of the camera and you're in costume, you have to put on these long coats because we don't want anybody. We don't want anybody leaking. Because it can kill a movie. It, and, and photos <laughs> were leaked, and people were like, that's not how they look. Look, they're wearing trench coats. Like, no shit. <laughs> You're like, um, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, it, was, it was something. It was something kind of recent, too. But, yeah, I mean, right. So so what is taken candidly off the set is not necessarily indicative of yeah. the final product. What's amazing about this photo, how many famous people do you think are in this shot? Who can you recognize in this photo? Um, what's the, the actress to the right? And I'm not real familiar with um, uh, Dark Shadows, so I, I wouldn't be able to say who was who. Well, not characters, but the, the actual real people's names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. The actress to the right, uh, she looks familiar. He this looks one? Like, yeah. That one dude looks like Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> um, well, apparently, this is Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Michelle Pfeiffer. And then who's next? Um... Johnny Lee Miller, we're going to go this way. Okay. Um, actually, let's go this way because I have it typed out. That one would be easier for me. Sure. As we know, that's Bonham Car Carter. Right. Um, she's uh, Chloe, which would be here. Um, Angelique here. Her last name is B-O-U-C-H-A-R-D. You skipped one. No. Oh, no, that's her character's name. Wait, I did. Eva Green. E Eva Green. Oh, my gosh. Eva Green is a blonde. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Who, who's the one to? Who's the one between her and Helen Bonham Carter? The boy is, here? Yeah. That is Chloe Mortez. Okay. Um, the boy? Gulliver McGarth. Yeah. Bella Heathcote. Okay. Um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Uh, Victoria Waters. Winters, I guess. is No, no, that's Bella. That's, and that's Johnny Depp. 
Ray Shirley as a housekeeper. Yeah. Um, Jack, Jackie Earl Haley. That is Jackie Earl Haley. Um, Johnny shit. Lee Miller. And then Michelle Pfeiffer. Man, you want it short and creepy, you go Jackie Earl yeah. Haley. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> <laughs> he does look way <laughs> creepy in that. God, he was so good as Rorschach, man. He was... Great, that was yeah. inspired casting. <laughs> so yeah, I just, Michelle it, Pfeiffer, yeah. she's she's looking. It does. Uh, it took me a while when I read the list. I was like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think this is gonna be awesome. It's it, it, it hits theater. It's directed by Tim Burton, of course, and it hits theater May eleventh. So I mean, I'm excited about it. I, I was never really big into. Dark Shadows. I've watched it on and off growing up, but um, I was never like fanatical about it. I, I I've only maybe watched thirty minutes of it total, like yeah. for a whole episode. Um, Johnny Depp was way into it. He, I read an interview about him today, and he was talking about how he would rush home. Really? After school, run home so he could watch it. Wow. It it you know it's hard to watch a show like that now, like through the lens of what we're you know modern filmmaking yeah be, because what we're used to is we're used to things that are so well produced and so well put together and you know dark shadows existed for years and years on a shoestring budget doing everything on the cheap yeah but you know but hey it, it's um it's it was uh storytelling you know like and if and if, and if the story's good then all well, the that's... other stuff falls away and that's what, and it's it's almost like you know the old Hitchcock films, um, like Dial M for Murder and stuff, whatever. One room movies. Yeah. Awesome. You could. Yeah. It's done so well, and just so it just, it, but it's one room. Yeah. No, I think that. Um, yeah. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of like an interesting thing about older films and and some of like the really great movies that were made in like the the you know through the 40s 50s and 60s is, is like these great movies were done for no money yeah and and they have to figure out all of these creative ways to tell these really great stories with no money and um and that's what made them really amazing too well cause... right but it was but it, but it really it, it really it really made the director Think about how they were visually going to tell a story without the aid of, you know, high dollar special effects because yeah. they didn't even know what they were. They didn't even have them. Like, like you look at the old, um, uh, you know, the old film noirs. You know, the, it's dark because they didn't have a complete set. Yeah. It, it had to be dark because yeah. they didn't want you to see what was on the other side because yeah. it wasn't finished. And you know, like, like that's um. It was, it, they're dark on purpose, and yeah. they had to figure out creative ways to tell these stories with with no sets and no budgets. And could could you imagine going up like if you could meet Alfred Hitchcock back in his heyday and say, you know what, me and my friend Bob here, we can do a show. I can make him throw a fireball across the the screen. I can make us sit anywhere we want in the world without leaving this spot. Oh yeah, That'd and I can have it. I can have it up so the world can see in forty-eight hours. Yeah, that, that, would, <laughs> that like... would blow his mind. Um, and you know, what? I, I read this interesting thing about um, one of David Fincher's sort of like visual idols is is Alfred Hitchcock, right? Yeah. And Fincher's like the go-to guy now. And um, and when Fincher made Fight Club. He he was trying to emulate um, Hitchcock's visual style of like like you know Hitchcock would move the camera in and out of the scene right and he would move the camera around corners and he would do all these things and Hitchcock did that with a real camera moving through a yeah. window and a real camera going around a corner they had all of these like physical limitations that, that Hitchcock had to overcome and he did it better than anybody yeah. and, and Fincher's only just trying to emulate him but Fincher has the the advantage of 
you know, millions of dollars of budget and computer technology yeah. and special effects technology that Hitchcock had no idea. An ample amount of the tracks that the studio owns that you could lay down and actually make a fake window. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, like, and, and Fincher even says, like, he learned his visual style from, from Hitchcock, yeah. and but he doesn't do it the same way Hitchcock did it because Hitchcock's limited by... You know, you can only crane in the camera so far before yeah. you run out of crane. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just the, the the things that we would do as kids. I mean, we don't even you don't even have to have a million dollars behind you or a movie studio. I mean, look at mixed tapes. Yeah. I mean, the fact that, and I'm sure everybody did this. The fact that when we had cassette tapes, I would sit in in my room and record songs off the radio and put other songs and. And just make this tape so I could listen to it of all my favorite songs. And then it turned in shortly after that when I was just ended up recording a bunch of Bob Larson shit. But um, <laughs> But that's later. That's a, no, that was all that was still in the same time frame. I went from music and all when I was hitting the dial, because I would what I would do is I would record and spin the dial and it would go and it would stop. <laughs> And I found Bob Larson that way, yeah. and then I just started yeah, <laughs> recording and there, and Bob there you Larson. Stayed. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that you know all that time and effort that you would do—maybe that's why I do videos now. But um, all that time and effort you would do to try to get the ninety-minute tape to have ninety minutes worth of song oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, on there without cutting it off, and, yeah. and now you don't have, you don't have to fucking worry about it. <laughs> What was that squeak? Um, uh, what was I going to say? It was something relative. I don't know. Maybe I should just drink some more beer. Just drink some more beer. Um, shit. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, man. You want to talk about creative filmmaking? And you want to see like real creativity? I watched this movie one time. And, and it, if I can't believe it hasn't been picked up for distribution because it was the coolest thing I have seen in a long, long time. It was, this was several years ago, and I'm, I'm surprised I haven't seen it resurface. It was these kids, and they did a shot-for-shot shot remake of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. And it took them eight years to do. And it's kind of like it was kind of like it reminded me of uh, – did you see Super 8? The, the ki- young kids are making the zombie movie in Super 8. And, and, and so anyway, these young kids, they were just this just kids with an idea. And they were going to do, do like their version, their take of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And they didn't have any money. They didn't have any special effects. They didn't have any budget. And so it was just them creatively coming up with ways to duplicate the scenes that they saw in Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? They didn't have a, they didn't have a monkey. They had a dog. So in all the scenes <laughs> where it's the monkey, it's this little beagle dog. And and, 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 and it's it, it's uh, probably 95% um, of all of Raiders, of Raiders of the Lost Ark, shot for shot. Uh, and it, it is some of the most creative work I've ever Can seen. Can you see it online now? Or? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I happened to be in um, – I was in Austin, Texas. And um, there's that place, the Alamo Draft House, mm-hmm. and they were showing it like one night only. And we were there visiting you just family to be there. And friends, and I, I saw that it was playing, and I was like, "Oh, we have to go to this because <laughs> I had read about it." Yeah. And then that was my chance to see it, and it was so cool. I bet. And you want to talk about being able to solve technical problems creatively for no money? Yeah, it was great. Right? That's it was, awesome. It was, it was really cool. And then that, like, now you look at guys today, like Michael Bay. And he just he just solves problems by throwing money at yeah. it, you know. Well, and and you know what? There's something to be said for that too. Though, like like look at a guy like James Cameron, right? He he, he creates shit, by, yeah. You know? but what he does is if the technology doesn't exist, he creates. It. Well, that's what George Lucas did on a different. It, yeah, I mean, I guess it, it would be the too. same realm, but it just it's a different time frame. Yep, so. and Peter Jackson did it too, yeah. and for Lord of the Rings, you know, like like these. But his, his, still, his best movie is not any of those. Uh... Yeah, yeah, Dead yeah. alive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still his best fucking movie. They, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Come on, that movie's fucking awesome. I thought you were gonna say like Meet the Feebles. No, <laughs> Dead Alive, straight but, up. I, I look, if you're if you're a director and you have millions of dollars to throw at something, that's that's fine. It's, you know, it's, it, I would hope that you got those millions of dollars because you you earned them. Yes, yeah. and and they earned them. 
by being creative, visually storytellers, and you get that way by solving those problems with no money. Yeah. That, that's like, you know, the best guys come out of low budget. Right? Well, if, if everything's handed to you and everything's easy, you never learn. You never un- develop that. I don't know what the word it would be for, but you never develop that that desire and that, that sweat that you put into it. I mean, why? It's like we talk about it all the time. We talk about, you know, computer issues. We do, we don't know what the fuck we're doing, but we what we do know is because shit fucked up, and yeah, we don't yeah, have the yeah. money to we don't have the money to fix it. I mean, it's it's the same idea. It's like until you can get you know neck deep well, into it. Have, have, you know, it, it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like like look at um um we're talking about movies, right? Look at um Dogville. Did you ever see Dogville? Mm. It's amazing. It's kind of neat, but it's it's an oddity, right? It's a Lars von Trier movie, and it stars Nicole Kidman, and there are no sets. All they do is it, t- it takes place on a stage, and there aren't any sets. There's just like literally these taped outlines on the floor that says like this is where a house is, and the door is here, and so all of the actors are 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 you know playing their parts. With no sets. There's no sets, no scenery, nothing. You just have, sort of have to imagine that it's there. And and, and, it, and it works a little bit, for me anyway. Yeah. Some people thought it was the most brilliant thing they'd ever seen, but I, I wasn't in that camp. I, but, I, but I thought it worked a little bit because you, you get great performances out of the actors, and the, and the actors themselves are very convincing even though there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, and then um, did you ever, have you ever seen like a dogma film? Right, mm-hmm. right. Those 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 movies, they they artificially impose those very same constraints that the B real film noir directors were working with in the uh, you know in the in the forties and fifties. Yeah. You know, like you don't get you can't you don't you don't you don't have a lighting budget because there is no lighting. You have to use all natural light, and so. You know, I, I I don't know. Like I think that maybe the dogma manifesto was maybe too constraining, and nobody it was too hard, and so nobody wanted to do it. Yeah. And then um. But I think that's where that where the passion of it comes in. I mean, yeah, but you know, I think like I don't know, man. Like you just get you, you can you can over confine yourself because most of the dogma right, yeah. movies are kind of crap. I mean, like I don't know, Italian for beginners. Well, I, I think when you start when you stop trying to try new things. With whatever project, whether it's film, whether it's podcast, whether if you stop trying to do new things with it, then it's going to die because you're yeah. you're you're not well, you're I, I you're, you're not the, nursing it the way it should be. I I think the dogma movement sort of failed because because then it became a slavish devotion to these minimalist standards, and and it became less about a visual story and more about adhering to these restrictions. Yeah. And and so I, I didn't see any really great creativity come out of the dogma movement. But but when it when it but and, and, and I think that a lot of filmmakers were like, I'm gonna make a dogma film just to show that I can because I'm gonna adhere to all of these restrictions and I'm gonna make a dogma movie and I'm gonna show the world that I can do it. Yeah. Whereas Let's take another director who has a big vision and he wants to do things big. And if he had a million dollars, he'd spend it. Only he doesn't. So now he has to come up with ways to make a thousand dollars look like a million dollars. You know, like, so I think there's more creativity there than what the Dogma Manifesto ever hoped to accomplish. Well, it's funny that you said that. Okay. We were talking about Johnny Depp earlier in in the show with um, Dark Shadows coming out. Um, Tim Burton film. So, you're saying, you know, with the Dogma films and stuff, you have this. Johnny Depp, and I forget who the other partner was, is pushing to have the Lone Ranger. You know, do... Yeah, I heard the, it got canned, though. No, no. It got canned, but it's back. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. It got canned because the budget ballooned to $250 million. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they canned it. Disney said, "Fuck no, we're not doing this. This is too much." But now it's back on. It's it's they got a new budget, and it's two hundred fifteen million dollars. They have agreed. They compromised on two hundred fifteen million dollars, and so the film is now being reworked. And Disney 
has um, is still kind of hesitant, um, but there it's back on track and it's being you know it's it's moving forward, and it's funny because. They went back. They went. They went to compromise between two hundred fifty million dollars to two hundred fifteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah, right, right. What the fuck? Well, but the funny, the funny five million dollars. I'll tell you what. They, we'll split it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get half. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take another. Right. God, what would I do with thirty five million? Like that, that's so much money, right? That yeah. Joke. Like if you had that much money, you you could lose a million dollars and not be not, pissed off and not even know it. <laughs> Like, oh, no, I, I lost a million dollars. Oh, no, I have 34 more. So, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But they said that um, that Disney pulled the plug on the Johnny Depp film weeks weeks ago because it, the— What kind of compromise is that? Like, all right, no, 250 is too high. 215. That's but, but you got you to gotta hear this. They said the reporting surrounding the trouble productions involved strange supernatural subplots that tied Johnny Depp's character, which he's playing Tonto, Um and he said one involve, even involved CGI werewolves. Um, yeah. So so they decided to cut that film, that, that's, that element out of it, werewolves with Long Ranger. What? Um, and so they decided to cut that and cut some other strange subplots, and it brought it down to 215. And so they're, Disney's like, well, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, anytime you get a really, like, big-budget, western movie when it, when it has like these astronomical you know 200 million dollar budgets you get wild wild west and you get <laughs> yeah. jonah hex yeah awful or are you get awful. are you get the film that really bombed that just recently came out the universal put out was cowboys and aliens that wasn't bad though no but but but, but, but it tanked yeah that, that, that could have been a lot better yeah and um yeah that's true that that was kind of that was that was a big budget, and that just didn't do well at all. And it had such great. It had potential. Yeah, and it had great actors. It had. I don't. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's just uh, westerns. That's the great American film genre, man. That's the one thing uh, we should be able to do the best. And we you think? But up. yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, I don't. I, I don't know the true history of the Long Ranger. I just know it was. The TV do, series. Do you remember the, the, I remember the TV series growing up, but I, a, is there, there is a there a really good movie? At least I remember it as being good because it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, but but there, I don't, I don't even remember who was in it. Um, but I remember it was a, it was a, uh, it was a feature Lone Ranger movie, and it was like Lone Ranger and Tonto, and he was a Texas Ranger. And yeah. He, he, he they, they, like they get ambushed, they get murdered. He's the only guy that survives. The Indians find him, they take him in, they you know nurse him back to health, and then to protect his identity, he wears the mask. And Tonto's his sidekick, and he you know gets the silver, the white horse, and 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 starts you know shooting the silver bullets. And there's no supernatural aspects in it at yeah. all. And I remember it being pretty exciting as a kid. You know? Well, I remember shows. watching the you know the TV series, and, and I don't remember werewolves. That's, that's I don't weird. remember any of that. And that's what I'm saying is like it's like are they doing what they're what other films have done with like World War Z? They're just like taking the name, oh, like yeah. Battleship. I mean, are they just taking the name, yeah, and then just running with it and saying, "Yeah, fuck your history." To <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, it, it's okay to have a fresh take on something, right? The, you didn't have the name fresh, is something. I mean, well, no, that's, that's not true. If, <laughs> if you didn't have a fresh take on something, we'd never have like The Dark Knight, right? The Dark Knight was Frank Miller's fresh take on batman and it was brilliant yeah but 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 he didn't just invent the whole reinvent the batman myth from whole cloth he, he took the batman myth and he just looked at it a different way and, and, he, and instead of you know focusing on um you know that those campy aspects of batman that we remember from the um uh from the old TV show, yeah. you know, he looked at the, the the craziness of why a man would dress up as a bat and go out and fight crime. Right? He looked at that, and it was brilliant. It was great. but he he didn't take the element of what. World. But he didn't he didn't take the element of what Batman who Batman is out of it. No, right, right. He kept he, right. He 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 did it in such a way that he kept the important parts in without like ignoring them or just throwing. them But away. in World War Z, they're ignoring what kept Ugly. what made the book. If they bring in CGI werewolves f f 
as far as my knowledge of the Lone Ranger, Ranger is, they're taking out the element of. I don't know why you need werewolves in the Lone Ranger story. <laughs> Unless he's just really pissed off at Twilight or something. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's what happened, man. There was some producer somewhere that was like, you know, werewolves are big. Got to put werewolves in there. Oh, wait, I guess he, he's like, uh, we know. The script. You know what this needs, son? Werewolves. Well, come. To, well, think about it. I, I guess I could see where they could throw it in there, which I don't understand where it falls in the in, in the storyline. But he has a silver horse and he shoots silver bullets. What do you kill with silver bullets? Werewolves. Werewolves. I know, but you know the Lone Ranger was <laughs> shooting silver bullets before anybody thought to shoot him at a werewolf. I know, <laughs> but he, I guess they're trying to answer that question of why at one time did he have? Yeah. But but if he starts if he starts shooting werewolves, he becomes Van Helsing. He doesn't become the Lone Ranger. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's really bizarre. Uh, <laughs> but apparently they cut it out and compromised for the two hundred and fifteen million dollars. So for all you Lone, Lone Ranger fans out there, it's it's coming. <laughs> I, I, Lone Lone Ranger. Ranger. I was always a fan of the Lone Ranger. Yeah, I yeah. thought he was it was a cool story and uh but they're gonna fuck it it's up. No Chuck Connor though. Yeah. The rifleman. I, was, I saw this comedian <laughs> one time and he would always talk about like in the rifleman he'd have like a shootout and and the bad guys, you know, got a pistol and he's gotta go from like here to here to here and like cock the gun and shoot it, right? And then Chuck Connor the rifleman's like, Go ahead, draw. <laughs> yeah. Go on, I dare you. And, and, and another thing, he was like, "How come nobody else had a rifle?" Because <laughs> he was a rifle man. He owned that trademark. But if somebody else could have been like, "Man, I could get a rifle too." Yeah, <laughs> that is funny. Um, speaking of rifles, the year is 1911. We're in China, and Jackie Chan's with us because there is a new movie called. The, the the U.S. name is uh, 1911, A Revolution. The what? 1911, A Revolution. And it's about the Chinese Revolution of Remember 1911. The Cultural Revolution? Yep. Uh, Jackie Chan is actually um, a revolutionary in this film. The trailer looks amazing. This is this makes Jackie Chan's 100th film. Really? Yes. Um, so I'm going to take a moment and play this trailer. Because... Um, I'm excited about this film. I, um, it, it looks amazing. It's, it's supposed. To, it's you know. It's 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 an epic based on the 1912 revolution. Um, it tells the story of the founding of the Republic Republic of China, um, and how the forces overthrew the, the. I don't know if I can say this, but the dynasty that held power, the QING. I don't, I don't either. Speak so, yeah, I don't either. So I, I, my Mandarin's not so good but, these days. But maybe um, after we watch this movie, then we'll, we'll know. So here it is. 1911. Can you make it big? Is this in your way? So that will be in theaters October 17th. It looks amazing. I know if you're listening to the audio side of it, you're like, it's just music. But if you get a chance, go check it out. Um, it is Jackie Chan's 100th, 100th film. And um, I love Jackie Chan. I think he's a great actor. Um, and this really looks good. So go check it out. It's the Chin Hai Revolution. Yeah. In Shanghai. Shanghai. As that sends forces. 
if I'm saying that right. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sun yet? I don't know. That's why I live in America, people, because <laughs> I can't speak anything else. Anyway, I'm excited about that. Check out the trailer for it if you're just listening to the audio. Um, you, you know that they built the statue of RoboCop. Oh yeah, in Detroit. Yep. And you know what? You know when I heard about that, the first thing I thought was they are going to be doing a new RoboCop movie because of that. There's no way that they would have done this without being a promotion. The last RoboCop movie was so good. It was so good. No, it wasn't. Well, let me let me tell you this. Um, MGM is prepping for a RoboCop remake. Of course they are. Oh my God! Did you see? Have you watched? Um, any of season five of Dexter? Nope. Peter Weller's in it. Peter Weller, of yeah. course, is the original RoboCop. He looks awful. Does he really? <laughs> oh my god, he looks horrible. Well, it's good that he looks awful because you know who they are talking to to try to get. You know who their choices are to try to get to play RoboCop. No. Okay. Don't bust out laughing like he did last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start off with Chris Pine. Yeah, right, okay. Whatever. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Ugh. Wait for it. Wait for it. Johnny Depp. Ugh. <laughs> 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 Chris <Pine>. Yeah. <laughs> well, they said that all those names have been mentioned as possible candidates to star. Um, you know what? It, it it'll never be as good. Because no, because that movie. Because Peter Weller was fucking great as RoboCop, and and man, what. What a showcase of his just like acting talents. That was so great. I believed he was a robot. I you know what I mean? Like I know it was a man in a suit, but I believed it was a robot <laughs> yeah. in there. You know what I mean? And and um so apparently the uh after the first Robocop, like when it was done, Peter Weller was like, Never again. I'm <laughs> never gonna that he's he, you know, like again, we we're talking about hard jobs. Mm. That was a hard job. Like being crammed in those yeah. suits all the time, it was uncomfortable. It was heavy. He was like locked in there. That was a hard job. And when it was over, he was like never ever again. And he did the sequel. And the only reason he agreed to do RoboCop Two was if they modified the suit and like eased up on him a little bit. Yeah. And you know what? And it it showed. It looked like shit. <laughs> You're like RoboCop Two. You didn't take one for shit. the team. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, um, I would like to see Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, Keanu Reeves couldn't act his way out of a paper bag. Well, we, we've agreed um, not to talk trash about Keanu. Reeves. I know. I remember that he's the all right guy. He <laughs> deep down inside, he really is. He's, I know. Okay, since we just kicked it off with a remake of RoboCop, it's, it's upon us. We don't we don't have much. They're fishing for the actors now. Um, Universal. It should be an unknown who's hungry and, and maybe to put up with a long hours and and it and it better um, be more gory than the first one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, um, uh, who directed that? That was uh, uh, Paul Verhoeven. He was awesome. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First yeah. Robocop yeah. was Verhoeven. And then the second RoboCop was based on a, um, a Frank Miller script. Really? Yeah. It I didn't know that. It shows, too. It shows. Uh, but nowhere near as good as, yeah. as the Verhoeven movie. Well, yeah, there's another good movie that Universal put out called Scarface. I saw that that was going to be remade. Too. They're doing a remake of that Scarface. That's an awful idea. And, and, and it's not just a remake. It's a They're using the term for this one, the re-imaging. And it's going to be a crime dr- drama for the modern times. That's just that's what a the bad fuck. Idea. When was Scarface a crime drama? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I it's, it's, when I when I see stuff like like oh they're gonna remake Scarface, I'm like, fuck Hollywood. It's fuck like, those guys. I hate them. Okay, let's look. Okay, what made Scarface good? It represented what was going on in the '80s. Cocaine. I mean, I mean to the extreme. I'm not saying yeah. cocaine. You know it. it Say no to drugs was big. The Colombian drug lords and all this other stuff was new to to America in terms what, what of. What year was Scarface? Um, wasn't it like? Don't say like thirty two because that was the Edward G. Robinson. Movie. Oh shit! 
I don't know. You're looking at it, but anyway, mm-hmm. but it the, it it echoed the, that era. Um, Eighty three. So, if they did a modern take on Scarface, let's let's look at this. If if you were going to do a film that would in the vein of Scarface that would mirror to the extreme of today's modern crime. It wouldn't be cocaine. It wouldn't be the Colombian drug, drug lords. It wouldn't be all, all of this. What would it be? It'd be a guy running credit card scams on his computer. Uh, what, <laughs> it, and, that, and I think you're right because um, when I was, we were talking about 3D printers earlier, one of the biggest things right now being done with 3D printers are people printing out full case covers of ATM machines and they're putting credit card scanners on the back of it going up and popping them on ATM machines so when you put it in there they steal your credit card information there's cameras on the the fake keypad that they get your pin pin number and they got your card they they steal your bank so that's what this film would be <laughs> yeah that's 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 glamorous yeah woo there's there's no way it could live up to it cuz that was just over the top 80s yeah i mean like you can't do miami vice now no, no, you know, even, <laughs> even Miami Vice, done by the guy that did Miami Vice, that was Michael Mann. Yeah. Right, Michael Mann did the Miami Vice show, and, and then he did the Miami Vice movie. Yeah. Not as good. No. Like, it, it really was a product of it of its time. And, uh, and, and man, I love Scarface. That's a cool movie, man. It's a great yeah. movie. And uh, uh, remaking it is fucking... In a, like, what about, what, I mean... You know what? If you want to tell a crime drama, cool. There's so you much know, fucking crime out there. You don't have to take like, Make a crime drama. Make a crime thriller. Don't remake Scarface. Because, <laughs> you know, like, uh, and, and there's so many iconic moments in Scarface that if you were to just redo those, you're just shitting all over the first one. Like you're getting Col- Colin Farrell to do it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? No. Because <laughs> I was worried that when he was going to be in um, Fright Night, he did well. But you, yeah, I, I will say, Fright Night was a remake that I was I was happy to see. That yeah. was that was a that that was a remake that 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 turned out okay. But, but having said that, Fright Night was kind of like a forgettable '80s vampire movie, right? Yeah, Scarface is not a forgettable movie. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't see how you could do better. When you watch Fright Night, you were like, "Hey, that's kind of cool," and I'm sure a lot of people watched it. And went, "Hey, that's kind of cool. I could do better." Yeah, and they did. They did do better. It was it was cute. It was it great. Was, it but you didn't see it in 3D, so you one. didn't. You you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, we'll we'll talk about it more when more information comes out about this film. That is a bad idea, Hollywood. Bad idea. Bad there, idea. <laughs> the, the, Talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I think they got the camera in front of me. I know. Because normally I'm like, <laughs> you just always pointing at me. I'm glad you're pointing at somebody else. Um, the wag of the finger. Yeah. <laughs> Another film that they are doing a remake of, which people have been wanting a new version of it for a long time, Evil Dead. And yeah. I'm excited about it. Bruce Campbell. Which was who played Ash in all of the Evil Dead, one, two, and Army of Darkness, said that um, made a statement on Twitter saying that last statement, Evil Dead remake is a retelling. All bets are off, and all involved love the new new approach. Then he went on saying that Ash will not be in it. Uh, I don't know. So it's so if Ash is not in it and Bruce Campbell says that all bets are off what does that mean that means that they can go any direction there is no longer a guy strapped cutting his hand off laughing in a cabin um right. attaching a chainsaw well, which which makes sense i mean fine, if fine. if you think of the franchise though that the lives in that world that's yeah. not just retelling the events of two other movies that told yeah. the same story yeah um, 
I, I'm great. I mean, if, if if they build the Necronomicon and Evil Dead into like a, you know, a smaller version of what Star Wars could be, what uh, or Star Wars is, and what um, other movies like Tron, you know, where there's multiple facets to the universe, where they can do that with a Necronomicon, kind of do like the Hellraiser box, but yeah. Um, That'd be cool. I'd I'd be down with it. That'd Bring, be okay. Bringing back the deadites and all that would be awesome. It, right. I, I, I think that's another example of like make another movie that lives in the world. You don't have to remake the other movies. Yeah. He said that they're um, taking out the the campiness though. He didn't say this. This is an article that I read. Um, that the franchise is taking it back to its hardcore roots, and that that was their response to why is Ash cool. not in the film. And he says, Ash cut off his own hand and put a sh- chainsaw there. That's hardcore. That's fucking hard. There was more <laughs> blood in that f- movie in five minutes than any other yeah. fucking movie. It is pretty awesome. So, that, I mean, that's exciting. I, I will. They had some of the best lines. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy. Oh, my gosh. No, it, it is a good movie. That's fun. Um, but I don't know. I could watch Bruce Campbell read the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got a man crush on him. Do you really? I do. That's awesome. Remember his Old Spice commercials? Yeah. Great. <laughs> I remember when I first saw those, I was like, what the? Awesome. <laughs> and I hate, you know, it's like, I'm not going to go buy those. I, I but you remember when um, Briscoe County Jr. and when he was on Xena? Oh, yeah. I never watched Xena until he was on there. And then I watched it just because he was and on he's there. he's absolutely reason to be on there. And then um, Briscoe County Jr. I was like, oh, my God. It's like, but it yeah. didn't last very long. So. No, that was short-lived. I even watched the other show he was on called Jack of All Trades. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. That was even shorter than Briscoe that was, County. That was another, like, <laughs> Sam Raimi-produced show where it was basically, like, an excuse to have a busted woman in a skimpy outfit. <laughs> yeah. Great. I wonder if I can find those and watch those. They gotta I be have somewhere. Them at the video store. Do you really? We have all of Briscoe County. We have all of um, <laughs> Jack of All Trades. We have uh, the first couple seasons of Xena. Yeah, I have. I have every episode of Burn Notice. It's all there. We should have a Bruce Campbell night one. Yeah. If you do watch Burn Notice, that's a great I, show. I said I didn't. Yeah. That's the only only one I didn't. I, I, when I first watched it, because I, I was I had way no later. Idea that Bruce Campbell would be in it. Yeah. And that he's like a recurring character, and I'm like watching the first couple episodes, and I was like, "Holy shit, it's Bruce Campbell! This show's <laughs> awesome. This, this show's automatically better every second Bruce Just Campbell because, is on screen." What do you think of Bubba Hotel? I love Bubba yeah. Hotel. That was great. I, I saw it when I played at the Narrow. Yeah. And. I, I didn't. Yeah, no, I, I went in not fun. not really knowing what to because I didn't read anything about it. I, re, I purposely didn't do any research on it, just so I could go in and get a fresh take on it. And I, I really enjoyed it. it was good. Do you know one of the funny things about Baba Hotep is? Um, I, I don't listen to a lot of like DVD commentaries. I don't know. I just don't have that kind of time. Uh, but the Bubba Hotep commentary is fabulous. It's really funny because Bruce Campbell does it. But he does it as Elvis. <laughs> That's and awesome. So it's funny. It's, just like, it's like watching the movie all over again. All the jokes. <laughs> yeah, just, That's awesome. I have to check that out. But speaking as Bruce, Bruce Campbell as Elvis, um, we're going to move into our 3D tech news section. Uh, another brilliant segue. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Um, this is about real-time face cloning technology. It's really awesome. Um There's, I guess, like, it's, it's more of augmented reality at the moment. Um, but they're working on it where you can actually change your face to be, to look any way you want. And they say there's going to be a time when you can actually walk down the street and you're like, oh, that person is somebody. But you can look, if you look closer, you see, you know, the imaging that happening. But it's it's a projection that happens to your face. Um and there's a there's a video that I want to I want to play it real quick. Um, and right now it, it mainly just works. There's no audio to it, so we can play it while we talk. Um, like this this is photo down here on the right hand side is who it's supposed to be. Some of them work better, um, work better than others, but others don't. Um, and it, and it's still pretty primitive. But the technology is there that they you can now project images onto your face um and look completely different 
Um, that looks scary. <laughs> yeah, that some of them look really good. Some of them, you know, are kind of. Now is is that? I say like that. Is uh, is that projected onto his face, or what, is that? It's more of aug- shows up on our screen. Well, that's what it is right now. It's more of augmented reality, but. Um, but it, I mean, even right now, when you when you're doing um, when you when you do like conference calls or whatever, you could change your face to whatever. It's so like this. It's so bizarre. <laughs> that is very strange. Hey, Brad Pitt. Good. Hey. You got tattoos all over him. Got a beard. So, what do you think about? Technology, like I love it. I think it's great. Uh, you know, that's um, and it's kind of neat. And and um, one, it's interesting that you can do it. And then, so I guess the next question is why? Yeah. <laughs> why would you want to? But you know, the, like technology is funny. Like, like maybe there's some aspect of it that uh, we haven't thought of yet, that where it would be useful yeah. in some manner. You know, who can say? But it's kind of neat. It's like a, they, they, they're calling it like a digital face tattoo. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. I mean, again, it's it definitely, like you said, there's not much practical use to it unless you're just having fun with your friends, you know, on video chat or whatever. But with places like Google Plus and Hangout happening, um, people you can change your face. You, you can now... You know, uh, there's that old internet joke of, you know, you think you're talking to a, a beautiful woman, you know, yeah, yeah, talking about all this stuff, and it's actually, a, uh, you know, a fat man playing World of Warcraft or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> but now when you, you're like, yeah, let's, let's get video chat. You can change, that fat guy can change into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, makes it even creepy. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like. Dude, I was like talking to this chick, and she's like, "I'm so hot." We were on the. She's so hot. No, <laughs> she's not. We're gonna meet at Starbucks or whatever, you know. <laughs> this is guy, hey, how you doing? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Maybe right. Awesome. Yeah. You do a lot. <laughs> the question is, why? Why would you want to? Now we know. Because it's, it's sexy. Internet porn. <laughs> it's it. It all comes back to internet porn. That's it. But. Um, Sony's released, um, I want to talk about this like several weeks ago, but we never had time and we got just a little bit of time where I can talk about it on this episode, but Sony introduced the world's first head mounted stereo 3d display. Um, and I think it's funny that they say it's the world's first because it's definitely not the world's first because there's older technology that I was drooling over when I was younger that I wanted, but it, this would be probably the world's first that, you know, you and I could afford. <laughs> But it, there's probably something about it that makes it the first. Yeah. Um, They're not the first guys to think about putting something stupid on your head. And- I'm so excited about it because, you know, along with my 3D, obs- 3D movie obsession, my sub-secondary obsession that kind of played a part with it was virtual reality. Um, I remember when I, when I was 20, I think I was, maybe 19, I played my first virtual reality game. Graphics, so- graphics were Horrible. All those VR games that came out, that was like, like the promise of that future technology. I, I fell in love with the possibility of it. I mean, I hated the graphics, but I love that I was in this place. And I could look anywhere. I could shoot anywhere. I could turn around. I could duck. And I was yeah, doing yeah. it. I was it, doing it. I loved it. It was always a disappointment. At least, at least for me, anyway. Well, I was I did, in love with the idea, too. I was just... I was in love with the idea. I loved the idea. I, I was I was as much in love with the idea as any other kid, and um, and the execution was poor. No, the execution would was horrible, horrible. But that's where gaming. Ever since that came out, that's where gaming's been going. That's the direction it's been going. That's why we have motion controls. That's why we have the um, Xbox. And all the other the PlayStation Connect. The Connect and all that have the that. Connect that's pretty hot. That's where we're going. We're going virtual reality. It is going, it is going that way. But even even with the Connect, though, even even with the Connect, it's first generation. No, it is. I, I know it is. <laughs> um, uh, did you see the thing where they made the Connect software open source, and so other oh, people yeah. were writing it? And, yeah. And they had one dude wrote a wrote software for the Connect where. It was like in um, 
uh, Minority Report where this guy is just using gestures in his hands in the air to like sort through pictures. Yeah. And like, like he's just moving his hands like this and, and he's, you know, seeing the pictures m- being manipulated on the screen. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, so that, all right, very cool. Right. I, I you know, couldn't do that 10 years ago. No. Um, but any kind of VR display, man, they were always a disappointment. You well, I can't. And I, and I, and I, and I know mm. the game you're talking about where, like, you stand in the thing and then, like, the big helmet came down. No, like, no, like, no. Those are a disappointment. I'm talking about the ones where you're in, you step into this round platform. You're given a controller. You have a head display like this that comes down. That It's separate. You just stick it on your head. You have headphones that stick in your ear. And you actually... It's not like that um, that game that you see in the arcade now, where you stick your head in there and you, you hold the thing. Right. It was fully you. You wore the pack and everything. Um, you had the vibrations, the force feedback stuff, which sucked back then. It didn't do anything really. Um, and when you ducked, your character ducked. You could you could lay down. And your character would lay down. Really. Um, and the the, the I held the gun like this. It was just a controller. It was like probably this big. And there's a button on top like that that you would push and your character would move forward. And if you wanted to turn, you actually would physically move your body and you would go that way. And you could you could look like this and still go forward, but if you turn your body, you would go. And there's like another character, it was a CPU character, and you had to shoot, kill him and shoot him. But there's all these clips that you had to jump on and stuff, and so you actually physically had to shoot. jump. Yeah, I, I, I loved it. And it was great. And I think on that table there, you'll see – I well, maybe it's behind me. I don't know where it's at. Um, I have a device that's this big, and it's like the, one of the first MP3 players. It was a 100 gigabyte MP3 player. And the it, it was actually a portable DVR. And when I first got that, my dream was because they had – a gen, Sony didn't put it out, but it was some other company. But it was a small – heads up display but it was like the guy from star trek um yeah the Jordi LaForge yeah visor. it was like a visor but it was f- full stereoscopic 3d yeah. and you could watch 3d movies until we it. get the hollow deck i'll settle for nothing less well you know <laughs> i'll t- i take gadgets any day <laughs> <laughs> um but no this is really really exciting i i really I mean, it's pretty neat but I- Again, but it's ever, not new technology. It's just this. See the glasses in there? The glasses that I loaned you that day to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I love it. It's $600, though. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. I, I, I admit it, but I'd have to actually, like, see it in, in use. And, um, I don't know, man. I, I think, you know, what, you know what I think the best, like, home gaming experience would be? Would, would be, um, the, uh, like you, not necessarily like the guy running around, but like um, like simulators, you know. Like yeah, you, you, ever, you ever been? There was a video game that was that was out for a while, and you were in like a a battle tech simulator. Yeah, that was funny shit. Yeah, because you you know it felt like you were in a machine, and 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 you, you know what was on the display was like you know like like the the heads up display on a battlefield. Yeah. So you didn't have to have like a whole total environment. Well, like Mech Warrior was awesome. You yeah. could like let me show you the very first place that I bought any of my 3D shit from. I don't even know if it's still um I don't know if it still ex- it still exists, but oh, it's still here. Um these are the heads up displays back that Back when I was a kid, that I was really into these. The, the, I mean, this is old school shit. Um, let me look at that stuff. It's awesome. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> it looks kind of dorky. But, no, <laughs> you did. You do not say that. But look at this. Shit. I I drooled over this side. I I bought my first three D shit from the the VR domes. Oh, what? I, yes, you remember, wait, go data back. Data glove. I remember even even Nintendo. Yeah, had they data glove and it didn't work this is the thing that i was talking about that i was in that's the v- the virtual reality simulator thing that i did um uh, they, they never work as promised they never work it worked really well type. but you know what i really want miley to kick my ass if she saw this i, I want a vision dome <laughs> what is this is dome? this is the vision dome too it's small it's actually uh, a dome <laughs> it's yeah. like i it's like the omni theater yeah. type stuff it's awesome but you can you can get um bigger ones like this one like how big that oh is. my gosh wouldn't that be awesome 
How much do you think that cost? We're, we're fucking. Uh, get, you remember that? Thirty-five grand. Three hundred and forty-five thousand five hundred. Three hundred and forty-five grand. <laughs> the, well, the 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 low end of it is one hundred. By an order of magnitude. Yeah. Well, the, the low end. That's a high end. The low end is one hundred forty-nine thousand five hundred. But the overall Dude, that is for someone with more money than sense. You know what? I would, it I never would... looks as good as it should. Whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> and nobody, nobody, you know, like, all right, great, it's fine, but like, I don't know. It's just the technology is. It, it's one of those things, and here's why it pisses me off, because. Because anytime, anytime somebody somebody has a new advancement, or there's a new take on it, or there's something something new. The, 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 the way the practical implementation never lives up to the dream. What? No, it these never does. Well, never. It's always a disappointment. No, it's because disappointment. like those. Fucking Captain EO <laughs> was a disappointment. Captain right? EO was not a disappointment. <laughs> that was good 3D. It was never as good as promised, though. No, I thought it was pretty damn good. It was, you know, I went into Captain EO thinking I would see the next great. It would, I, I, you know, like you, you're promised this one thing that would that would be like this great experience. And I don't know if you're promised it or maybe like I hyped it up to that. I just, it's it's just the the experience never lives up to the expectation. Well, you know, this display and all no, the other I ones. Captain EO well, wasn't awesome. No, I know. But this display and the other ones that I was showing you just a few mom- moments ago, what makes this live up to its experience, it's not made for gaming. It's made for v- movies. Uh, my 3D movies, all my 3D movies, fucking kick ass in that. It'll still be the same 3D movie. Gaming, Motherfucker, gaming no! Because gaming is a user-dictated experience where there's no, I know. movies you're just watching a story being told. But in 3D. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it turns out the whole life is in 3D, man. But think about it. Okay, Sony has a a professional. It's actually sitting in the background um, of this image. But they have a 3D video camera. I have a 3D video camera. Imagine hooking that into the 3D video. Because see, when I film in 3D, I have to wait until I'm done recording, plug it in the computer, fucking run it through my 3d shit if i had this and i plugged it into my 3d camera i could see what i'm filming in 3d uh, i could see it and it would be in 3d no, it wouldn't look as, it, you, you can, cannot say it doesn't look good <laughs> watch watch movies and like the thing I, like you and i sit here talking this is occurring in 3d i'm seeing the whole world yeah but you suck right now. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome no no See, you you and, and, and the, and the <laughs> it, they never live up to the to the expectation. Never. You have been hanging around Paul too much. You are a naysayer. I'm I'm not a naysayer. <laughs> I'm just I'm just in, in, until you get the hollow deck, everything else falls short. You know, you're never going to be able to experience a hollow deck until you know the older technology. Well, you know, if tachyons can move faster than the speed of light, then, <laughs> then you should be able to time travel. And I want the guys from Starfleet here now to deliver the holodeck. Well, if you, if you wish that, the people, the, the actors of that movie would be like, Poof, right in the house. And you're like, while we're here, guys. I remember, I remember watching the Star Trek episodes, and I was like, they had the holodeck. And I was like, bad ass. Like, I would fight somebody for a chance to get to the holodeck. If you were in the, if they, if we had a holodeck. The stuff that happened in Star Trek would never happen because everybody would be hanging out and drinking. They all be in the holodeck. They'd be getting high or drinking or whatever in the holodeck going, this is pretty cool. No shit. <laughs> like, what could go on the holodeck? Anything. Anything you, you want. You can think of it. Computer. <laughs> right, right. And I don't even have to, like, I don't have to spend time writing code. I can just say, like, <laughs> computer, uh, run, simulation, whatever. That's it. Right, and, and, like, <laughs> and then I can be like, no computer, you know, older, greener, bluer, and, yeah. you know, uh, whatever, faster, slower. It doesn't matter. It's, just, it's all whatever, whatever you say. Like the, you know, computer. That was always a funny thing about Star Trek. Nobody typed. Nobody. <laughs> they just said computer. I want to say computer. Yeah. Computer, in this show. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's about time. It is time to end this show. Yeah, is that time? Right. It is that time. We did it. Sweet. Just you and me without Paul. We know, did right? it. 
We, we did nearly as funny though. Well, I'll, I'll throw in some laugh tracks. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> a laugh track is what we need. <laughs> yeah. we need you need to you need to tell people that hey, it's funny. Laugh now. <laughs> laugh. No, what, what I'm, I'm next time we do a show, I'm gonna have a little device sitting here that's gonna be plugged into the all the audio recording and when you push it it's canned laughter and oh, good. <laughs> so when we think something's funny we can go ah. all right let's do that i have it what sure no, i won't pull it up because we got to end the show um i want to thank you and you and you and you <laughs> for hanging out with us talking to us or actually listening to us <laughs> the the people that i hear talking to me y'all can't hear sorry um, <laughs> no, it was actually a great show. Um, next week we will not have a show because you'll be gone in the Arctic Circle. I will be in the Arctic Circle looking for the thing or Ridley Scott, whoever comes first. So that's cool. Either way, both would be cool. I'll throw a microphone up in front of. I'll them. miss you. <laughs> I'll send photos. <laughs> But but the website, the blog, and everything, I'll, it will still stay active. I'll still write and do everything from there. So we'll do updates, and if I get any, any interviews from there or anything, I'll try. I don't know. It depends what it is. I'll either put it up as soon as I get it, or hold on to it till I get back. You know. So just keep an eye on it. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to the Talking Dead. If you want to visit the website, go to zombiepopcorn.com. If you want to email us, there's a contact. Up there that you can push, contact us. If you want to donate, there's a donation thing. If you don't want to give money, but you want to give comments, we have comment sections and we have a survey that you can take to tell us what you think of the show, what you don't like about the show, and whatever. Um, so, And a lot of people have been taking that comment, and we've been taking them seriously, and we're, we're improving everything because of you. Next time we'll be nude, and we'll have Vaseline. <laughs> have a great night. <laughs>